This video is made possible with the support of Headphones.com, the home of the 365 day return policy. Headphones.com has some of the best service and selection in the personal audio industry. Visit Headphones.com today for all your personal audio needs. So this is it. Hey friends, my name is Marcello. Today I have the great pleasure of giving you my impressions on the Nautilus flagship personal audio tube integrated amplifier from Justin Weber and his team at Amps and Sound. If you're new to the channel, welcome. On the channel, we love to discuss home audio, personal audio, and technology. For this review, I'll be listening to the Nautilus paired with several digital analog converters and streamers, such as the NAD C658, the Chord TT2, the Matrix Audio Element X, the Topping D90, the Ship Bifrost 2, the Blue Sound Note 2i, as well as AB listening to the Nautilus versus the ZMF Pendant headphone tube amplifier and the Mogwai OG tube amplifier. As with all my audio reviews, I will utilize the majority of headphones and speakers in my collection or any headphones or speakers that I have in for review to search for synergies with the Nautilus. I've not been compensated for this review and all thoughts and impressions are my own. I'll cover five main topics, build quality, specifications, design, and quality of sound, then I'll give my overall conclusions, so let's get right into it. Amps and Sound was founded by Justin Weber, a fellow audiophile who has loved music since childhood. Introduced to music early on by his parents, Justin learned to play the clarinet and tenor sax. Justin fell in love with the sound of Magnapan 3.2s after he had his first hi-fi listening experience with them. Justin went on to first start breaking down and modifying Dynaco amps and learning the skills and the craft of amp building along the way. Rather than being drawn to solid state amplifiers, however, it was the technology of tube amps that pulled Justin in. The classic designs of tube amplifiers that could be built to last a lifetime is one of the driving forces behind the amplifiers Justin builds with his small team at Amps and Sound. Amps and Sound's mission is to create engaging audio components that offer superior sound quality using proven theories, solid engineering, and quality manufacturing that takes place right here in the USA. Sourcing only the highest quality parts, hand assembling each amplifier, Justin and his team create amplifiers that can be handed down from one generation to the next. This is a breath of fresh air in my opinion when compared to many of the mass produced amplifiers that can be purchased and recycled when they fail after a few years of use. Justin states that his amplifiers can actually be serviced 15 to 20 years down the road if need be, using three significant components, capacitors, resistors, and diodes with no silicone voltage regulators or integrated circuits to hot rod their designs, Justin and his team take a quality over quantity approach to manufacturing using industry leading capacitors, large core output transformers, and extremely stiff power supplies. All the internal wiring is done with silver plated Teflon and silver solder with extreme attention to detail. Amps and Sound is a throwback to true American craftsmanship with beautiful design, beautiful sound, and like American muscle cars of old, some serious steel underneath the hood. Now that we know a little bit about the design philosophy of Justin and his team, 
let's get into the build and design of the Nautilus. But before we do, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and follow our Instagram for more great content. The Nautilus was created when Justin decided he wanted to make a few amps for himself that were to be his to enjoy. The Nautilus uses a dual mono layout onto a single chassis, utilizing Amps and Sound's most versatile circuit, the Mogwai. The Nautilus uses two power transformers, separate power supplies, chokes, and input transformers. The amps were built with separate turret boards with the only shared components being the input tube, volume control, and the outputs. Choosing the most robust power transformers they could find, the Nautilus needed a hand-built, custom-fabricated chassis. Using 12-gauge steel with bracing, which can support the 40 pounds of transformers without any strain, the chassis is built very tough, with the Nautilus weighing in around 68 pounds and around 93 pounds shipped in its large Pelican-style case. The Nautilus is a classic design with turrets and point-to-point -point wiring using no silicone ICs or regulators. Not many amplifiers are built in this fashion due to the extreme expense and time to create a tube amplifier in this way. The Nautilus depends on transformers instead of using a voltage divider network that other amplifiers may use. One of the coolest features of the Nautilus is its five dedicated locking headphone output taps, low Z or 8 ohm, 16 ohm, 32 ohm, 100 ohm, and high Z or 300 ohm. The Nautilus also has a pair of 8 ohm five-way binding speaker posts allowing the user to simply select via toggle switch on the back of the amp between headphone listening or the speaker listening outputs. One of the reasons why the Nautilus is able to perform and sound so incredible is the custom wound ultra high quality output transformers from Transcender. These output transformers provide incredible frequency extension and a flat response. Using Cinemag transformers for input transformers for XLR to RCA conversion, the Nautilus is able to provide a reduced noise floor, pristine clarity, and incredible sub bass. Using the finest coupling caps, Jupiter copper foil and wax caps, the Nautilus provides an amazing amount of micro detail retrieval. The volume control is a 24 step attenuator, allowing for precise channel matching. The Nautilus allows its user to select from a wide range of tubes, including 6L6GC through KT90s. Coming standard with the Nautilus are a match pair of 6L6GC STR or KT88 power tubes, a single 12AX7 output tube, and two 5AR4 or 5U4 rectifiers. I was sucked in from the moment I fired on the power switch and watch the tubes begin to glow against its elegant but visually refined exterior. The tubes are a big part of the visual appeal. They are positioned front and center and they glow prominently and gently reflecting this glow off the chrome which really mesmerizes you in a dark room when you're listening to speakers or headphones. Utilizing single-ended class A operation with zero feedback, the Nautilus provides true old school set sound. The Nautilus is large and in charge at 17 and a half inches wide, 15 and a half inches deep, seven inches tall, and weighs nearly 70 pounds. The version I had the pleasure of reviewing was in white with chrome, which I really loved as it looks incredible next to my Kef LS50 Meta speakers. Standard color for the Nautilus is black, but many other colors are possible if you contact Justin. There are more specs such as power ratings, distortion, and design philosophy behind the Nautilus if you want to go into more detail. I will link to Amps and Sounds website in the video description for you to learn more. Okay, so buckle up. We're gonna get into the quality of sound. From my very first listening session with Nautilus, it was love at first listen. I remember it like it was yesterday. I just got home and I had a very long day. I deeply needed to just unwind and escape. You see, to me, music is more than just reviewing gear and creating YouTube videos. It is a healing energy, it is a motivating, heartbeat, it is a therapeutic calm, and most importantly, when all the right factors align, it transports me away from the real world and into a higher plane of being. Those of you that are listening to this right now or watching this, you might be nodding your head and saying, yep, I know what he's talking about. Music is a form of meditation, so on that day I decided I knew which album I wanted to listen to first with the Nautilus, as well as the exact headphones I wanted to hear this record on. After grabbing the ZMF Ferrite Open Desert Ironwood headphones, I quickly dropped the first track from one of my favorite albums of 2020, Symphonic, from the Thievery Corporation. As I sat down to enjoy the music, I was immediately struck by the sound of the Nautilus, 
paired with a verite and how the vocals sounded so lifelike as if they were in the room with me and not being actually played on headphones at all. The amount of micro detail from all the instruments, the slam from the bass, the timbre of singer's vocals, the tonality of the instruments, the completely fatigue-free sound, and the way the music was just perfectly layered with space between every note on the track, it's just brought the biggest smile on my face, one that didn't leave for hours. The effortless presentation of the music was being displayed for my ears like no other amplifier had ever done before. I was hooked from my very first needle drop, first track, very first spin. I continued to listen to my gear playlist thinking to myself, well, there's gonna be a genre of music, DAC, or headphones it won't play well with. Well, spoiler alert, this just wasn't the case. Every song, every digital analog converter, every pair of headphones I paired up with the Nautilus, and it just continued to wow me, bringing that smile back to my face. The music continued to release more oxytocin and evoke more positive emotion in me as I listened. This was just transporting me to that place as audiophiles are striving to always reach. The ZMF Verite Open, Desert Ironwood, and Nautilus are a match made in heaven to my ears. One of the best American headphone builders in the world paired up with one of the best American ant builders in the world. The results were nothing short of just pure magic. As I continued to review the Nautilus over several months, I listened to it with numerous headphones, all of which sounded incredible to my ears. The Nautilus brought out just the very best qualities in all of the headphones I listened to. Having the ability to choose from five headphone outputs from eight ohm to 300 ohm allows the Nautilus to be the one and only amp a listener may ever need. It's a tube roller's dream as well with so many ways to customize the sound to your personal listening preferences. All of my listening was done with a Sylvania Blackplate 12AX7, two Tung Soul 5AR4s, and two JJ Electronic KT88 Apex Match power tubes. I honestly never once felt the need to want to roll other tubes as the sound was that brilliant from this combo. However, a Nautilus owner very well could and should roll tubes until their audio bliss is reached. Some tubes are noisier than others, so finding the right combo for the lowest level of noise to signal ratio along with the tonality of sound you're going for will be part of the fun of truly making this amplifier sound all your own. During my entire time with the Nautilus, I preferred listening to it from the 8 ohm, 16 ohm, 32 ohm, and 100 ohm tap the most, depending on, of course, the impedance and sensitivity of the headphones I was using. Even with the higher impedance headphones from, say, ZMF or Sennheiser, I still felt the 100 ohm or less tap sounded the best to me, providing the best signal to noise ratio for my personal preferences. Interestingly enough, with my dynamic driver headphones from ZMF, I was able to create multiple types of audible listening experiences by bouncing between the different headphone taps, with the most intimate and dynamic sound coming from the 100 ohm tap. However, when listening to the ZMF Aeolus, if I wanted to give the perception of a larger stage to my ears, I could just drop down the tap sum to the 32 ohm or 16 ohm tap for a wider sound at the sacrifice of some of the bass and some of the dynamics. The ZMF Aeolus sounded just magnificent paired with the Nautilus and all of the DACs that I paired with it. The engaging live concert sound, incredible mid-range and sweet vocals that the Aeolus is so well known for was just turned up a level, providing the best presentation I have ever heard from the Aeolus. The ZMF Verte Open easily one of my favorite pairings with the Nautilus, was able to produce all of the micro detail, detail, and subtle dynamic shifts in music like I have never heard before. Vocals sounded so lifelike, with so much space and air presented in between every sound, every instrument, every vocal, while still pulling the vocalists in close like they were actually in the room with me. Every time I listened to the Nautilus paired with the ZMF Verte, I was just left astonished at how good they sounded paired together. The slam and punch from the ZMF Verte Open were also on another level when comparing to the ZMF Pendant, also one of my current favorite tube amps, which I will discuss more later when we get into the comparison section. Utilizing the Ross and Audio Rad Zero, one of my favorite planar magnetic headphones for its incredible engaging signature, 
excellent punchy bass, and one of the best overall timbres from a planar magnetic headphone in my opinion was just an outstanding experience. I found myself listening primarily on the 16 ohm and 32 ohm taps, which was a nice option to have versus a ZMF pendant, as the pendant only has an 8 ohm and a 100 ohm tap. The reason for this is I enjoy the base of the Rad Zero and the way it presents itself. However, the 8 ohm tap doesn't fully flesh it out, whereas the 16 ohm and 32 ohm tap do a better job in my opinion. The 100 ohm tap of the pendant can be fun with the Rad Zero, especially if you're going for slam in the bass region. However, the staging suffers some and doesn't sound as good as it should, which is completely understandable if you consider the impedance of the Rad Zero. I was also lucky enough to have the Empyrean in for review while I had the Nautilus. I preferred the 32 ohm tap of the Nautilus with the Empyrean. The dynamic punch and staging of the Empyrean paired with the Nautilus made for some of the best electronica listening sessions I have ever had with any headphone, hands down. I love the way the Empyrean stages, as well as how the bass is handled by a completely separate driver coil. When paired with the Nautilus, I found myself just getting lost for hours in electronic music, knowing that it will likely be some time before I get to hear this combination again. The Empyrean is currently one of my favorite headphones for electronic music, and the Nautilus is currently one of my favorite headphone amplifiers, if you couldn't tell yet. So I dove really deep into that genre and pairing while I had them. You see, the Nautilus to my ears doesn't sound overly warm or tubey sounding like some tube amps. It sounds a touch warmer than the pendant to my ears, but it just layers the details of the music in a way that doesn't ever sound forced. Yet it also enabled me to hear details and micro details on recordings I had never heard before. Speaking of detail, I was also fortunate enough to have arguably one of the top detail kings in the headphone world in for review, the Hyphaman HE1000 SE. After listening with the Hexi for a few weeks, I was again just left wondering how I was ever going to be able to hear orchestral music or classical music this good again from headphones. The HE1000 SE never sounded overly fatiguing when paired with the Nautilus from the majority of recordings that I listened to them with. The lovely sub-bass extension from the HE1000 SE was simply just breathtaking when paired with the Nautilus. The amplifier seemed to always provide, in my opinion, everything the HE1000 SE needed to perform the way those headphones were designed to perform. Complex passages in classical music, movie soundtracks, and big orchestral compositions were presented incredibly to my ears, taking full advantage of the opera house style stage of the HE1000 SE and all its open sound and glory. Acoustic music paired with a warm tone vocalist sounded again, just so lifelike and just addictive to listen to. The Nautilus isn't going to hide a terrible recording. It's important for me to note that. When pairing the Nautilus with any headphone, whether it be, say, a very detailed forward headphone, such as the HE1000 SE, or a warmer engaging Aeolus, expect to hear the signature of that headphone at its very best, in my subjective opinion. The sound signature of the DAC you pair with the Nautilus, along with the quality of the recording you are listening to, will shape the sound of what you are listening to. The Nautilus is, in my opinion, what a true set amp reference sound should sound like. Last, but definitely not least, I tested extensively the Hyphen HE6 SE version 2 Adorama Edition with the Nautilus. The HE6 SE and the several variants it has had over the years are just notorious for being hard to drive, needing usually at least minimally four to five watts to sound good and ample current. I've always enjoyed pretty much every Hyphen headphone I have heard so far, but they always seem to lack dynamics or slam, which is ever so important in my opinion when listening to many of the modern produced genres of music that I personally listen to. The HE6 SE version 2 kind of changed all that for me. While still sounding very open like many Hyphaman headphones, they slam harder than most headphones I have heard, especially paired with the Nautilus and the powerful KT88 power tubes. I settled on the 32 ohm tap as the best pairing 
with a 50 ohm HE6 SEV2s and put it through all kinds of different types of music. The Nautilus provided the best sound I have ever heard from these headphones. So how does the sound of the Nautilus compare to the Pendant and the Mogwai OG? First and foremost, it sounds better in every regard, as one probably should expect as it's Justin's flagship headphone amplifier from Amps and Sound. Let me give you some brief subjective impressions though, so current Pendant or Mogwai OG owners looking to possibly upgrade know what they would be getting as far as different quality of sound. Starting with the bass and dynamics, the Nautilus reaches deeper in the bass regions than both amps, as well as sounds the most dynamic. The level of punch the Nautilus has is simply incredible, but at the same time, not really that surprising based on how much iron Justin packed into the Nautilus. A great track to really hear this is Mombasa off the Inception soundtrack. The Mogwai OG has the next highest level of slam and bass presentation followed by the Pendant. All three are extremely enjoyable to listen to, however. Next, the mid-range of the Nautilus sounds tonally exceptional, extremely well balanced and presents vocals better than the other two amps. Vocals are just so lifelike and intimate. A few tracks that really stood out to me were The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, The Council of Elrond featuring Enya, and Fragile from Sting off the My Songs version album. Sting's vocals are presented larger with a bit more vapor trail from the Nautilus's tubes with the best tonality by far, in my opinion, of the three amps. Listening to Sting's vocals on the pendant, they are presented with a bit more distance, a smaller image, with them sounding a bit less lifelike. Still awesome sounding, don't get me wrong, but not at the level of the Nautilus. Switching to the Mogwai OG, it pulls Sting's vocals back in closer to me, similarly to the Nautilus. However, the vocal image size on the stage is not as large or lifelike. Uh, Sting's vocals sound the most rounded off with a touch more warmth versus the other two amps when listening to the Mogwai OG. Strings sound tonally more delicious to my ears from the Nautilus than both of the other amps. A great track to hear some serious strings on display, in addition to a few I have mentioned already, is Deportation off the Babel soundtrack. The strings just sound so beautiful and come across effortlessly when listening to the Nautilus. Listening next to the pendant, and strings tend to jump forward in the mix a bit, demanding your attention. Listening next to the Mogwai OG, and it sounds tonally similar to the Nautilus in the mid-range, with a bit more warmth to my ears, and the strings don't have as much texture and maybe definition in my opinion. Again, all three amps sound excellent, different, and uniquely their own. Trouble to my ears is again best presented by the Nautilus. Violins, flutes, clarinets, trumpets, horns just sound spot on. Image definition and sparkle is again the best I have heard from a headphone amplifier, while still not presenting a fatiguing sound signature. It defies my logic as a listener that I can hear more air in between notes, more sparkle, more image definition, while it never sounds sharp, overly energetic, bright, or fatiguing. This is how treble should be done. The next most airy sounding amp of the three would be the Pendant, with a bit more energetic sound in the treble region, as the Pendant was designed and tuned by Justin and Zach specifically to be paired with ZMF headphones, which tend to lean a bit warmer in some cases. All of the instruments that tend to fall into the treble region sound very good, with some string, wind, and brass instruments having a bit more solid state timbre. Lastly, the Mogwai OG is the most rounded off of the three amps, with it sounding to my ears to have a bit less image definition, air, and space in between sounds. Tonally, instruments sound a bit warmer that fall into the treble region compared to the other two amps. Again, all three sound lovely and uniquely their own. Detail and micro detail presentation are by far the greatest again from the Nautilus. I was hearing breaths in between notes, adjustment of chairs by performers in orchestral compositions, and fingers uh, making magic on fretboards with more clarity than I've ever heard before. The next most detailed sounding amp would be the Pendant, followed by the Mogwai OG. Tonality wise, you guessed it. The Nautilus has the best tonality across the board, sounding just a touch south of neutral with the tubes I reviewed with it. I just can't fault this tonality in any way for my listening preferences. The pendant sounds neutral to my ears, similar to some solid state amps I have heard before, however with the benefit of the euphony and staging that tubes bring. 
the Mogwai OG has the warmest tonality of the three amplifiers, landing a bit south of the Nautilus. Obviously, all of my subjective sound impressions so far are my subjective sound impressions, and they're really based on the tubes that were rolled with the amps, which I will list in the video description. So this means a listener can shape the sound and tone of the amplifier a bit more one direction or another based on the tubes they select to roll with it. Okay, let's talk about stage and imaging last, but definitely not least. The Nautilus has the most enveloping stage, providing the most amount of width, depth, and space in between notes while still pulling the vocalists on tracks the closest to me. The imaging of the Nautilus is precise, with images on the soundstage appearing larger and taller than both of the other two amps, giving the feel that the music is in the room and not being listened to on headphones at all. Again, this is my favorite soundstage of any amplifier I have ever heard to date. The Pendant has the next widest, deepest, and best imaging soundstage, followed closely by the Mogwai OG having the smaller sounding stage of the three amps. With the least amount of air and space between vocals and instruments, Again, selection of tubes and power tubes can play a role in the sound of the stage in my experience with all of Justin's amps I have heard so far. All three sound lovely and present a sound again that is uniquely one of a kind. Okay, so let's talk briefly about the quality of sound when listening to speakers with the Nautilus. Then I will give you my overall conclusions. All of the same amazing attributes I have described so far about the sound of the Nautilus also apply when listening to speakers. The one area that was a little more challenged with my speakers was the lower end. Part of this is the sheer size of my listening room as well as the efficiency of my Kef LS50 Metas. In order to really fill my room with a quantity and quality of bass I prefer, the Kefs require more power. However, in a smaller room or with more efficient speakers, a listener may not need any more power than the Nautilus presents. If the Nautilus could have implemented a preamplifier feature in its build, this would allow for it to be used with other amps to drive harder to drive speakers while still gaining the benefits it presents in sound. However, you could simply just utilize a streamer with a subwoofer output to add a subwoofer to your system and have the total package. My overall favorite pairings of DACs with the Nautilus was the Core TT2, the Matrix Element X, and the NADC658 streamer. All of the other DACs I used were also excellent sounding with the Nautilus. So who is the Nautilus for? I think it is for the discerning audiophile who wants the very best, in my opinion, for headphone listening, with the ability to also drive efficient speakers for an incredible two-channel experience. Some people will say the Nautilus is too expensive for their budget. However, some of these audio enthusiasts may also own numerous $2,000 plus amplifiers, headphones, digital analog converters, and turntables and speakers. So I look at this a little differently. To me, I see the Nautilus as a value proposition for that serious type of listener. Instead of having to own numerous different types of amplifiers, digital analog converters, and headphones in order to find the perfect synergy between them all, a person could move along some of their current gear and purchase the Nautilus while still keeping a few of your favorite headphones and DACs to change up the sound a little when you have the itch to do so. This quite possibly could allow you to have one of the best headphone listening experiences of your life in my opinion. When you factor in the ability to roll tubes with a Nautilus to further change the sound and the argument for having multiple headphone amplifiers and digital analog converters to pair with different headphones for synergy becomes even more moot in my opinion. As always, with any audio product this expensive, I always recommend listening to it first if you have the ability to do so. This way you can make sure you enjoy the sound of the Nautilus as much as I do. I look forward to the day when I can be reunited with my very own Nautilus as it was the greatest headphone listening experience I have ever had so far. Again, thank you, Justin. I appreciate you. Thanks to Amps and Sound for sending me the Nautilus to review. And a big thanks to all who continue to support the channel by subscribing, commenting, liking the videos, and sending me more gear to review. Don't forget to check out our website and follow our Instagram for more unique content. Until next time, friends, as always, I appreciate you all and much love.